Jesus. Uh, my name is Sheila Wangari Ngario. I am born again, and I love Jesus. He has been good to me. He has been faithful. He has seen me through every end of life. He has seen me through the valleys in my life. He has seen me through the storms of my life. He has seen me through the good days. He has been Ebenezer since I was born. And since now, my 25 years of existence, I have seen the Lord. And I really want to honor Bishop and Mom for giving me, in, in the absentia, for giving me this opportunity and the entire pastoral team to be speaking to you, the oracles of God. And I believe that the Lord is going to speak through me and he's going to encourage someone today He's going to speak to someone today. He's going to enrich someone today. And I also want to thank uh, Bishop and Mom because they have entrusted me. I have been in ministry since I joined this church when I was a teenager up to now. And I, really, I have an altar I can call home. Let's open our Bibles for the word of today in the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse number 26 to 36. 22 to 36, sorry. Matthew, chapter 14, verse 22 to 36. And I'll read. Uh, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that, that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell when, while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified, and in their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid, he said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called out to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes. Come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked in the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed uh, back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. All right. Uh, this is a portion of scripture that I deeply love. I think I have read this scripture over and over again, a hundred and one times, a million and one times. And I love God because you can never get enough of scripture. Sometimes when I feel that this is the revelation that God wants to speak into my life, and then you realize, ah, Kumbi, when I'm reading it again, the Lord is revealing himself once again. Let's pray for the word. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, thank you because you want to speak to our lives today, oh God. We pray that, Lord, it's going to land on good soil, Jehovah God, that it's going to sprout good seeds in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, that even as we listen to it, my God, may you speak into our hearts and may you nourish us in the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, maybe I can just recap before before all this story happened, and, and I believe that most of us have read this story about when Jesus was telling the disciples to go to the other side of the lake, and that He was telling them that I am going to see you on that other side. Just before that story, there's a story that we are told about when Jesus was feeding the five thousand uh, people with two fish and five loaves of bread. He was with His disciples; they were doing it when they were asked, "What do you have?" That is when the miracle happened, and then immediately after after, after that miracle is when Matthew uh, 14, 22 comes in and saying that immediately after that, Jesus blessed the multitudes and did all that kind of thing. And then he gathered the disciples and told them, I am going to see you on that other side of the lake. And then Jesus went and dismissed the multitudes. And then he went to himself to pray. And the Bible says that immediately Jesus had finished and even as we go on dividing this world today, I want to talk to those people who have been watching the wind lately. Watching the wind lately means that we are worried about the things that you have no control over. You are worried about your son. You are worried about your daughter. Maybe you are saying, maybe I'm in the high school at Haribika. And your kid, you are worried about even eight years to come. You are worried that that cancer is going to finish you, and yet it is in stage one. Whether it's in stage one or whatever stage it is, that our Lord is 
is a healer and you, you need to believe and you need to, to firm up your faith. You are worried that your marriage is not going to work because you have seen many marriages not work. But the truth is there are still marriages that are standing today. There are still marriages that are working today. Why don't we desire to look at the positive side of life and just ignore the negativities of life because even if it happens, Christ is, Christ is a God who redeems. Watch this. Give me verse 22. Immediately uh, after Jesus had blessed all the multitudes and the crowds at, a, at that time, he made them get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And at some, at some point during the instructions of Jesus, he told the disciples that I will meet you on the other side. He gave them his word. He gave them an assurance that you are going to walk through this storm. You are going to walk through this lake. But one thing is sure. I am going to see you on that other side of the lake. And dear believer, our challenge as believers is that it's not believing that we are going to see him on the other side. That's not our challenge. Our challenge is how long is it going to be before we get there. And that is the thing that really carries us the most. That is the thing that really destroys us the most as believers. We know for sure, for real, the Lord has told us that go through, through this lake, go through this river, go through this storm. But one thing is sure, I am going to see you in that other side, uh, side of the river. But you have just gone three miles inside the river and you are starting asking questions. Is this really, truly the Lord who told me to go into this river? Is it truly the Lord who has told me to go into this thing? The challenge is not believing that you are going to see him on the other side but the challenge is how long is it going to be before I get there but may we not be found in that position may we not be found asking that question how long is it going to give me before I get there and the Lord gave the disciples his word he told them that go through this lake and I'm going to see you on that other side on that other side of the lake and the Lord has given you his word today he's not going to leave you nor forsake you in that lake he's going to hold your hand and the Lord the word of God has been there from eternity to eternity from Genesis to Revelation and the Lord has given us that word so that he can redeem this humanity it's the living breathing word of God it's the Logos word of God who is Jesus Christ the book of, uh, of, of, of God in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And all the things were made by him, and for him, for he was with God with the beginning. Church, the Lord has given us an assurance that no matter what happens in our lives, that no matter what it is that you are going through currently, uh, the Lord is going to see you on that other side of the lake. When he was sending the disciples in that lake, he knew one thing, that it is at night, the lake is freezing. It is at night, when it, when it, when it goes even to three o'clock, maybe the temperatures are very low. He knew that they were going to experience that storm. He knew that the darkness was going to catch up with them in that lake. He knew that whatever it is that was going to happen, I know everything. But I want to, I want to remind you today that put your trust on the Lord. Hold on to that word that the Lord gave you. If he has promised, whatever it is that he has promised you, when the Lord has told you that you are going to be the head and not the tail, hold on to that word for dear life. When the Lord has tell, told you that he has blessed, you are coming in and you are going out, hold on that word for dear life. The Lord promised the disciples that no matter what storm you are going to go through that lake, no matter what it is that you are going to go through, no matter the kind of darkness you are going to experience, I am going to see you on that other side of the lake. And the Lord has promised us believers today that no matter what happens in our lives, there is a crown of life that awaits us. He is going to see us in that other side of the lake. He is going to portray his victory as long as you, you, as long as you don't give up uh, in the middle. As long as the storms that are going to uh, you are going to experience that they are not going to carry you that he's going to keep you in perfect peace as long as your eyes are stayed on him that he's going to establish your steps that he's going to hold you from the fall as near believer hold on to those words because at the end of it all we are going to go and see jesus uh, when after every all is said and done hold on to these words for dear life and then after jesus had dismissed them he went onto the mountainside to go and pray it's always good to have some long time for you to for prayer after everything, after a long day, after the hustle and bustle of the city. It's always advice, ad, 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 advisable to always have some good long time for prayer. Then when evening came, 
uh, he, Jesus was there alone. But the boat had already gone. Maybe to some, um, when Asamanga, that lake was like four miles wide. So you can imagine when Jesus was going to pray, it, the, the boat was inside the river like two miles, two miles wide. And then something happens, uh, as we've read in scripture, that when the boat had already gone a considerable distance from that land, they are challenged by something. A storm comes in and there are waves. The waves, the wave of a wind. And they are challenged because why? The wind was against it. Remember these people, these disciples, most of them were fishermen. They were used to the storms. They could predict the weather. They could do all these kinds of things. These people were fishermen. They were, they were, they, they were able to, they were masters of that situation. They were masters of the storms. They were masters of the wind. And, the, and it also applies to our lives as believers. Sometimes we think that we are masters of situations. Sometimes we think that we are masters of our own lives. We know exactly how, how life is going to unfold and know that, it, that because I have gotten a job, this and this is going to happen. I know because, because I'm going through this situation. You are a master of your own situation. But we can see that the disciples, regardless of being the masters and being fishers of men, they were challenged by this storm. They were challenged by these waves. And the very thing that, our, that, that God is calling us to do is to our firm our faith in him. Our, because our faith in him can only grow when we keep our eyes stayed on him. And together, and, uh, uh, and, and today we are gathered here in this sanctuary to get to see what is going to win. The calling that God has put in our lives or the circumstances that challenge what God has put in our lives. The calling that God has put in our lives Oh, the calling that, uh, that, that I say the opposite of that. Is it faith that is going to win? Or is it fear of the storm that is going to win? Is it faith that I can go to that other side of the lake and I, and, and I can truly see Jesus? Uh, we are going to either be a student, uh, a student of the storm or we are going to be a survivor. Are you going to be a survivor of the storm or are you going to be a student of the storm? But church, if I was to be asked today, I would choose to be a student of the storm. A survivor is someone who just survives the storm. A survivor is someone who just wants to get just that other side of the lake and forget nothing that happened before. But if I was to be asked, I would desire to be a student of that storm, to be able to understand why did this exactly come into my life? Why is this challenge that I'm going through coming the way it's coming. And once you have understood the challenge of the storm, you will realize that there is someone, there is a God who is above that challenge. There is a God who is able to see you on that other side of the lake. Desire to be a student of the storm and not a survivor of the storm. And yes, uh, today's sermon is the wind or the word. The wind or the word. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the wind? Are you going to choose the storm? Or are you going to choose the, the word of God? And here we see the disciples coming face to face with the storm. And I can imagine this, they start to talk to one another and maybe like Matthew is telling John, did God really send us into this place? Are you sure that he's going to see us through, through, through the other side, side of the lake? Are you, sure that, um, are you sure that the Lord told us that he is going to be with us even in this storm? And I want you to realize that this was an, an unavoidable storm. It had to happen the exact time it happened. It had to, uh, to happen the exact time of the night that it happened. And this was an unavoidable storm just like we have storms in our personal lives, just like we have storms in our lives, even as Christians. When we get into such a storms, there are things that you need to understand. There are things that you need to ask yourself. Ask yourself several questions. Am I going to get this out of this storm the same way I came into this storm? Am I going to get out of this lake having not learned anything? Am I going to get this out, out of this place and I'm going to be swallowed by the crocodiles of, of, of life? Or uh, at the end of it all, am I going to see this? Jesus. Verse 25. Uh, about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it is a ghost. Yeah? And even before I, 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 say, um, I say that, it was about three o'clock in the morning. And believers, um, the word of God does not miss out anything. There is a reason as to why the word uh, three o'clock in the morning is mentioned. If you are to read about the history of the Romans, you'll come to realize that they have div div divided, hey, defeat. 
they have divided their their their, their time in, in in watches uh we have uh, three uh, uh, with a span of three hours each between 6 to 9 p.m at night between 9 to 12 a.m and between 12 to 3 a.m and the word of god in verse 25 is telling us that about three o'clock in the morning is when jesus is showing up and i want to remind you that jesus could have showed up at any hour of that night he could have showed off himself at 9 p.m he could have showed off himself at 12 a.m he could have showed off himself at 1 a.m but jesus is coming in the fourth watch of the night when the disciples have tumbled in the sea, when the disciples have gone through all these things in the sea, when the disciples have gone through the waves, through the storms, and they were expecting that Jesus was going to show up a bit earlier, but he's coming during the fourth watch of the night. But it's almost morning. That is when Jesus is going, when, when Jesus is going to show up. But I want to remind you today that sometimes God does not show up according to our calendars. Sometimes God does not show up in our lives according to how we expect him to show up. Maybe some Sometimes, maybe right now you are going through a storm. Maybe right now you are going through something. You really don't understand why it is that you are in that thing. And you expect that the Lord is going to show up, show up himself at the first watch of the night. Maybe you are in that first watch of the night and you are giving up. Maybe you are in that second watch of the night and you are asking God, is this healing ever going to happen? Maybe you are in that third watch of the night and you are saying, oh my Lord, remember me. But his timing is designed just that, that you may be able to trust in him. Ask Lazarus, even if he's four days late, he is still on time. Even if he does not show up the exact time that you expected him to show up, he is a Lord of. Uh, he's a Lord who knows. He's a Lord who understands our situations. He is the Lord who understands our mountains. He is the Lord who understands our storms. And I want to encourage you today that even if he is late, even if he shows up on the fourth watch of the night, even if he shows up in the third watch of the night, the first watch could have been bad for you. The second watch could have been bad for you that that watch could have been bad for you and now you feel like giving up but the truth is during that fourth watch the lord is going to show up and once he has showed himself he is going to reveal himself once he has showed up himself he is going to glorify himself as the god he is when lazarus was dead his, his sisters were asking lord your friend died he died long time ago and you are showing up on the fourth day your best friend and you're showing up on the fourth day and he is saying that it doesn't matter how after how long i am going to show off myself. Once I've showed off myself, I am glory, going to glorify myself in your life. When Paul was speaking to, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 verse, verse 9, give me 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 in the message version. And he says that, and then he told me, uh, give me the previous verse, kindly verse 8. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it here. Paul is speaking about the thorn, the thorn that he was talking about, the thorn that was in his life. And then at verse 8 says that, at first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged God to remove it. Three times I did, I, three times I did that. And then he told me, my grace is enough for you. It's all you need. My strength comes in it, into its own in your weakness. Once I had that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in my weakness. And believer, I want to remind you today that it doesn't matter the kind of dawn that is in your life. If the Lord has promised that this dawn has come for, for, to glorify him, his life, he is going to show up in the fourth watch because he wants to glorify himself in the first watch. He wants to glorify himself in the second watch. He wants to glorify himself in the third watch. But I want to challenge you today. Are you going to wait up to that fourth watch? Are you going Going to give up in the first watch? Are you going to give up in the third watch? Come on, uh, I, I, I want you to raise up your faith and realize that the Lord wants to do something in your life. And the Bible records that Jesus was praying on a mountain, and I can imagine it was just right beside the sea. And then the Bible says that. Um, uh, the, the, the Lord saw, saw that storm and, and the way he shows, he shows off himself uh, much later. And I can imagine that when the Lord is, is on that mountain and he can see everything that is happening because he's an all-knowing God, he's an omnipresent God. And I want to remind you today, believer, that just because they didn't see Jesus does not mean that Jesus did not see them. 
Just because the, the, the disciples did not see Jesus does not, not mean that Jesus did not see them. Christ, God's timing is not purpose to give us relief, but it is purpose to give us a reflection. Just because you cannot see Jesus in the storm does not mean that Jesus is not right there with you in the storm. Just because the disciples did not see Jesus, Jesus knew that they were right in the middle of the storm and he knew the time that he is going to reveal himself. I want to encourage you today that the eyes of the Lord are on the sparrow. The eyes of the Lord are on you always. It doesn't matter what it is that you are going through in life. Maybe una Juliza next year, what to wangu what I shule. Maybe una Juliza my my marriage, my marriage is, is going down, una Juliza, all these kinds of things, but it doesn't matter. That is just the third watch of the night. And when the master shows up in the fourth watch of the night, he is going to reveal himself, he is going to heal your wounds, he is going to heal that breeze in the name of Jesus because his eye is on the sparrow. He has constantly been watching you. You, you. you made it and today you are up and standing because he has a purpose for your life. Doesn't matter what the enemy tries to bring in your life. Doesn't matter the kind of storms that the enemy tries to bring in your life. As long as you keep on staying, as long as you keep your feet grounded on Christ, the first watch is going to end. The second watch is going to end. The third watch is going to end. And then the fourth watch, the Lord is going to reveal himself. He is going to come and, and, and show himself as a faithful God because he's a God who never lies. He's a God who says that he's going to be with you even to the end of ages. He's the Lord who promised us that no matter what happens, I am going to hold your hand. He's the Lord who has tattooed his, our, 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 his, our names in the palm of his hands. He is the Lord in whose breath we breathe today. He is the Lord who says that no matter what happens, I am your Lord. He's the Lord who told Jeremiah that even before the end of ages, I knew about you and I had chosen you to be a priest among the nations. Everyone under my voice today has a purpose on this earth and that is why you are living today. That is why you are listening to this sermon today. And I want to encourage you today, do not give up. Do not give up on God's calling over your life. Do not give up because of the circumstances that you are going through in your life. When that time comes, the Lord is watching over you. Right in the middle of that storm, he is going to show up himself. He is going to show off himself. And I want to encourage you today, my sister and my brother, my fellow, my fellow child of God, just because the storm is raging does not mean that the, the Lord has left the scene. Just because the storm is going through in your life does not mean that the Lord is nowhere to be found. He is right in the middle of that storm. He is in, right in the middle of that mess. He is right in the middle of that scene and he is glorifying himself. Just because he hasn't stopped the storm does not mean that he doesn't see the storm. Just because he hasn't stopped those, those winds in your life doesn't mean that he can, he's not seeing that storm. But he wants to show up him, he, he wants to show up and show off himself at the right time. Just because the enemy has started that, 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 that sickness, just because the devil has started it, doesn't mean that the Lord is not going to use it for his glory. He's the Lord who turns the, the negative into the positive. He's the Lord who turns our life stories. He's the Lord who comes up even when we think that he is too late. The Lord was watching the disciples the whole time. The Lord was seeing the disciples the whole time. The Lord was seeing them right in the middle of that storm. And the Lord is seeing you today right in the middle of that mess, right in the middle of that temptation, right in the middle of that test, just because he hasn't showed up does not mean that he's not seeing you. Just because he hasn't showed up does not mean that he's not watching over you. The eyes of the Lord are on the sparrow. Are you going to keep your, your eyes on the wind or are you going to keep your eyes on the word of God? The, the word of God says that... Um, uh, yeah, I wanted just to, to encourage you that he has numbered the hairs of, on your head. I believe that even in the bad things that has happened in your life, the tears that you, you have cried for, for the many years, all those tears have been stored in a jar. And there is no tear that is beyond redemption in the presence of the Lord. There is no tear that is beyond redemption as long as you are waiting on God. On that fourth watch, the Lord is going to redeem your tears. On that fourth watch, the Lord is going to redeem your finances. On that fourth watch, the Lord is going to redeem your marriage. On that fourth watch, the Lord is going to redeem the things that you, you think that you had lost. And then the, the word of God goes on to say that um, Jesus went on to them walking on the lake. Then when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were at peace. No. Uh, the Bible says that they were not at peace. They were terrified. When they saw Jesus, the disciples were terrified. And the first response, what, what, they, what, what it is that they responded with first. And when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were, they were what? 
they were terrified and in their fear they cried out it is a ghost and maybe i don't know if this is god or if this is the devil i don't know if i'm supposed to do this or i'm supposed to do that the challenge in trusting god is uncertainty the challenge in is uh, sorry sorry the challenge the challenge is trusting god in uncertainty you have had you have have, have to uh, i can imagine the disciples were wondering to themselves did we hear jesus right did he say that he is going to get to see us on that other side of the lake did he say this and this and this but see if you keep on thinking that that god is going to show up in a situation it's going to feel better all of a sudden then that's the, maybe sometimes he can show up himself and j- just come and try to pat your back and tell you that everything is going to be okay then the disciples are just looking at jesus and he's when he's showing himself and they are terrified and they are wondering is this a ghost who is this really who is this that has showed up himself and the bible says that they they, they were not scared because ukisoma from maltmeanza there is no way that the bible has mentioned that that the disciples were scared but when jesus jesus himself shows up the disciples were scared and you see now why you can't rely on your feelings because your feelings are going to lie to you sometimes when, when the disciples see this as a ghost they think uh they are not sure who this is really is because maybe they were thinking to 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 themselves we are at the, uh, the fourth watch of the night maybe they are ghosts in this sea maybe they are the devils as they, as villa lukwa na samanga as the devils are found in the lake maybe these are these are these are just devils and i want to remind you something that sometimes when the lord is closest to us is the same moment when the wind is blowing the strongest I want to repeat that point again that sometimes the moment when he's closest to us is the moment when the wind is blowing the strongest and the disciples were terrified saying that it's a ghost they said and re- and cried out in fear and now Jesus instead of rebuking the disciples and telling them we are just from feeding the 5000 people instead of rebuking them and calling them names the Jesus responds and tells them that I am remember that this is a significant term of God that Yahweh I am and if maybe when, when I was trying to think about that i was thinking he could have just used any other words he could have just said no joe nini wase niko hapa you wacheni kuogopa but the but the lord is saying that i am i am yahweh i am i am which is the name of god and this is a name that jesus is showing that he is in a spirit but jesus shows himself in flesh and he says that take courage it is i and it's more than just him saying it's me he's identifying the presence of god and connecting it to the eternal god and also connecting it to the word when he speaks it is i do not be afraid and then here comes peter peter in equal doubt uh, in, in in equal part doubt and starts being curious and saying that i participated in that miracle of feeding the 5000 people as I, i saw i saw him convert two two loaves of of, of bread I, i i saw him do this and this why don't i try to challenge myself and why don't i try to do to do this and this and then peter says that ah master if this is you call me and let me walk on this water I want to get on this one too. I am tired of of being in the boat with Judas Iscariot. I am tired of being in the boat with Bartholomew. These are people who do not know how to sail the boat, but I want you to call me if really this is you. And then I can imagine uh Peter Peter trying looking at Jesus and then uh, verse verse 29 Jesus says Yes, come Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. just hold on there yes come uh for many times i've always thought that it's it's because peter had a lot of faith that is why maybe like he walked over the water but reading this scripture yes come jesus said yes come jesus said so peter went over the side of the boat and walked over to jesus and i am thinking that um peter was just uh, like demonstrating the possibility of what if that is why in the previous verse he was saying that what if what if if it's you jesus tell me tell me to come and then peter um and then uh, verse, verse 29 verse 29 jesus tells him yes come jesus said so peter depended and peter was floating on the water because he depended on the word of god peter was 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 floating or rather peter was walking was walking on water because he depended on the word of god he depended on what the master told him he pegged himself on the word he did not want to peg himself on the wind he said instead of focusing on the wind let me focus on the word that the master has given me and the wind was against them but the word was for them 
The wind was against them, but the word was for them. Believer, I want to challenge you today. Are you going to keep your eyes on the wind? Or are you going to keep your eyes on the yes come of Jesus? Are you going to keep your eyes on what it is that is happening around you, on the external existence of the things that are happening around you? Or are you going to focus on the word of Jesus? Fear is faith in the wrong what if. What if there is something on the other side? What if there is something on the other side that is worth going into the storm for? What if there is just a revelation that the Lord wants to reveal himself as long as I am going to as long as I'm going to keep my eyes laid on him and I'm just going to challenge you with one question that this, this is just this is not uh, it's the questions where preachers usually ask it's just a normal question have you ever walked through something in life and just holding on to your faith and saying that if God brought me out here he will not leave me now have you ever sat down and said that if the Lord has brought me this far, he's not going to give up on me? And that is exactly the word that I'm speaking about today. When you talk about the wind or the word, that is the word, that, that is what we mean by walking on the word. Have you ever had to move towards something in your life that you have been scared about to death? You didn't have any experience about it. You did not go to that school of, of studying whatever it is that has been happening in your life. But all of a sudden, that thing becomes the thing that you stand on. The very storm that was challenging Peter is the same water that he's standing on the same challenge that that had come in the lives of the disciples is the same thing that 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 Peter is doing and that is what I mean by walking on the word walking on the word by believing the promises of God that if he said that he is going to see me in that other side of the lake no matter the kind of storms no matter the watch that he is going to reveal himself it's a sure guarantee I am going to hold on to that word for my dear life I am going to hold on that he is going to heal my family I am going to hold on to that word that he is going to cause breakthrough in my life. I am going to hold on to that word that he is going to be with me even to the end of ages. I am going to hold on to that word. I am going to hold on it so tightly that even though he is going to show off himself in the fourth watch of the night, he is not going to find me terrified. I am not going to see him as a ghost. And the problem is sometimes we get so terrified in life that even when Jesus shows up himself, we think it's a ghost. A ghost, a, a ghost of our troubles. A ghost of the things that we have been going through in life. And we confuse him for a ghost. We confuse, we confuse him for the, for, for the very things that have been happening in our lives. And today I want to encourage you that as long as you are going to stay put on the, on the three watches, on the fourth watch, when Jesus shows up, you are not going to fear. You are not going to be terrified because you are going to remember, oh, this is the same Messiah who reminded me, who told me that he is going to see me on that other side of the lake. He has now come to reveal himself because he is going to hold my hand through this storm. He is going to hold me through this storm. If and in this face of disappointment, Peter is walking on the word, but he's walking against the wind. Peter was walking on the word, but he was walking against the wind. And so are we as believers. Jesus did not stop. The, because I, I, I tend to imagine, Jesus could have just decided that I'm going to stop this wind and the boat is just going to come. But Jesus did not stop the wind. He gave the word. Jesus did not stop the wind. Jesus did not calm the storm immediately, but he gave the word. And maybe that is what exactly is happening in our lives. The Lord is not just going to come and storm the wind in your life uh, like instantly. He is going to give you a word that you are going to hold on throughout the, throughout the period that you are going to be in that lake. He is going to give you a word that is going to be with you even in the trace of disappointment, even in the face that you are going to go through. And the Bible says that after Peter had walked on the water and came towards Jesus, Peter made a critical mistake. He took his eyes off Jesus and focused on the wind. And he saw the wind. He looked at the storm and he was tense. And which one is stronger, the word or the wind? Church, between the word or the wind, which one is stronger? The word is stronger. And, I'll, and, and personally, I would want to say that it all depends with where you lay your eyes. It all depends with where you watch. If you decide to watch the if you decide to watch the wind, then the wind is going to be stronger in your life. If you decide to watch the word, then the word is going to be stronger in your life. Is it the wind or is it the word? It all depends with what you choose to watch. And the only reason why Peter went down is because he decided to take off his eyes off the word and decided to focus on the wind and he started sinking. The moment you have focused on the things that are going through in your life, the moment that you focus on the things that are surrounding 
surrounding you, you are going to sing. But as long as you have kept your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your life, as long as your eyes are stayed put on him, as long as you are kept on him, the Lord is going to save your life. You are going to walk right on that challenge that you thought that was a big challenge in your life. You are going to walk on that river that you thought that was the storm in your life. As long as you have put in your eyes and faith is the ability to say, I'm putting my eyes on the goodness of God at this moment. Faith is the ability to say, I am putting my eyes on the goodness of, of the Lord this moment, and I am not looking back. I am not looking forward. I am not looking around what is happening to me. I am not looking in the middle of me. My mind has already reached a conclusion that this is the master that I want. My mind has already reached a conclusion that even if no matter what happens, if everything goes worse, if everything goes from worse to worse, if everything goes crazy, if everything rises against you, God God is an army all by himself, believer. God is your largest support system in your life. God is the Lord who is going to sustain you. God is an ever-present help in time of need. It doesn't matter what it is that the wind is trying to stop in your life. It doesn't matter what it is you see as if it's the storm in your life. The master hasn't put his eyes off you. He is still looking at you. The wind is not going to shake you off. The wind is not going to blow you off your feet. The wind is not going to challenge you. The wind is not going to do anything unto you. As long as your faith has been grounded on Christ, who is the author and finisher of your life, you are going to hold on to it. And I can imagine Jesus is telling his most brave disciple that you of little faith. And when I was reading this, I was imagining the people who should be told they, have, or they are of little faith are those disciples back there in the boat who, who did not even dare to even tell Jesus anything. But Jesus is looking at Peter and he's telling him, Peter, you of weak faith. And, 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 and I was just trying to think, it's not, ab it, it's, not about the, it's not about the faith that we have, but the quality of faith that we have. It's the quality of faith that really matters because Peter really had faith. But as long as he, as, when he put his eyes off Jesus, when he put his eyes uh, uh, in rest and he put his eyes in the wind, at the end of the day, it's not the amount of faith but it's the, it's, the, it's the quality of faith that you have. And maybe we have been going through different times as, 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 as I'm almost winding up. Sometimes when, maybe when you are starting this journey with Christ, he told you and he assured you that get into that boat. Let me dismiss these crowds. Let me dismiss whatever it is that it is that you are going through in your life. Get into that boat. Sail through the storms of life. Sail, sail through whatever it is that you are going through. And once you've gotten to that other side of the sea, I am going to see you. I am going to meet my master. And I want to encourage you today, believer. Doesn't matter the kind of storm that you are going to go through. Doesn't matter the kind of winds that it is that you are... Maybe a uh, bishop loves saying that you are either in a storm, you are either you have either come out of one, or you are either going into one. Maybe your life is just perfect right now, and you feel as if things are just happening very well, but you do not know about tomorrow. That is why I'm encouraging you today. That doesn't matter the kind of watch you are in. Some of us are in our first watches. We have just realized something is bad. Some of us are in our second watches. We think that everything is going against us. Some of us are in our third watches, and we are asking God, why well, was it you who really? Told told me to go to that other side of the lake but as long as your master has told you I will see you on that other side of the lake hold on to that faith hold on to that word hold on to that word for your dear life knowing that if he told me he is I, I, I am going to get healed no matter the kind of that, 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 that I currently have he is going to heal me if he told me that he is the Lord who teaches me how to profit no matter the kind of losses I'm experiencing in my business he is the Lord who is going to see you on that other side of the profit doesn't matter what it is that you are going through. Hold on to that word for dear life. The, 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 whatever revelation that it is that the Lord has given you. Don't see it as a ghost. Don't, uh, refuse to see the Lord as a ghost. Because once he, once he has revealed himself, do not be terrified asking himself who this is really is. And you know what, believer? As, uh, uh, the, the, the thing that will make us not see the Lord as a ghost is keeping our eyes on him, having intimacy with him, walking with him as our friend. He, has, he no longer calls us slaves of fear, but he calls us the slaves of righteousness. You are not just any, any, any other person of this world. You are a son of God. You are 
are not just a holy God. You are a friend of God, and therefore you friends of God. Therefore you are the heirs of the kingdom. And in the kingdom, he has promised us that I am going to give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. I am going to give you everything that this life can offer. I am going to give you everything that godliness can offer. And what is godliness? Godliness is the fruits of the spirit. I am going to give you love because I'm the author of love. I am going to give you the perfect peace that no human being can give. I am going to give you the love of God. I am going to give you self-control. And then he says that I am going to give you everything that pertains to life and godliness. What does life come with? Life comes with every good thing. Life comes with every perfect thing. As long as you don't give up in the first watch, as long as you don't give up in the second watch, as long as you don't give up in the third watch and start looking at the wind, believer, you are not going to sink, but you are going to walk on that very thing. Peter was walking on the water and the water was the one that was challenging them. You will walk on that very thing that was challenging you because God is a God who is faithful. If he said it, he is going to bring it to accomplishment. If he said that, hold on to this life, no matter what it is that you are going to go through, remember that there is a crown that awaits us. At the end of it all, when our lives are taken, when we go back to our master, there is a crown of life that, 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 that awaits us. And it could be beautiful when each and every one of us hear those golden words, welcome good and faithful servant. Instead of hearing that I do not know you, depart from you, me, you ungrateful servant. I would love to ask to hear, to hear those kinds of words that welcome you and you and welcome good and faithful servant because we are not going to give up. I want us I want us to decide today that no matter what it is that, 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 that is happening in our lives, no matter the kind of storms, as long as the master said it, hold on to that word. You remember that word that the, that, that, that the Lord gave you during that particular moment, during that particular time the storm was happening. No matter how long the storm has taken, hold on to that word for dear life because he's a faithful God. He is Emmanuel. He is Yahweh. He is Rapha, our healer. He is our Lord who never changes. He's the Lord who never takes off his eyes off, off the storms. As long as you are in that storm, the Lord, even if you don't feel the, the Lord being with you, the Lord is there with you. And, um, and it's unfortunate if, if, if you haven't given your life to Christ because when, when all these watches are happening, when the first watch is happening, the, the second watch is happening, the third watch is happening, and then our master shows off himself in the fourth watch, he can, never, he, he can never show off himself if you have no relationship with him. Not even showing off himself. He cannot even tell you to get into that boat. I am going to see you on that other side of the lake because you have no relationship with him. But once you have said yes to Jesus, once you have said that I am going to walk th through this journey with Jesus, he's a, he, he's a sure guarantee. The Holy, the word of God reminds us, I think it's the book of Ephesians, uh, the Holy Spirit is a deposit, is a deposit, is a sure guarantee of the things that are going to come. You have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit for you to be able to maneuver through, through these watches. Oh, these watches are difficult. These watches are not easy. These watches, you are going to walk with people who do not have faith. These watches, you are going to walk with people who are going to discourage you. These watches, are, you are going to walk with people who do not know your journey. But as long as you know your journey and you know who you have believed in, you know your journey and you know who you are walking with, then one thing is sure, the Lord is going to meet with you even to that other end side, um, side, side uh, even, even to that other end. Hallelujah, our God and our Father in the name of Jesus. We worship you and we give you all the praise because you are God, because you are high and lifted up in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We want to thank you because you are reminding us in your word today that as long as our eyes are stayed on you, Jehovah God, you are going to walk with us even in the storms of life. It doesn't matter what storm that we are going through right now. It doesn't matter the circumstances that are, that are surrounding us right now. But one thing that we are saying, my Lord, we are going to hold on the word that you promised us, Jehovah. That you are going to walk with us through this life journey. You are going to hold us even to the end of ages, my Father. We are going to cling on to the firm foundation. We are going to hide ourselves under your arms where there is security, my God, because we know one thing, the boundary lines have fallen in pleasant places for us, and we have a delightful inheritance in you, my God. Whatever it is that the Christian life might bring, whatever it is that this life may bring, my God, as long as you have promised us that you are going to see us in that other 
other side of, side of the lake, my God. We are holding on to that word. The storms may look as if they are going to swallow us, but thank you because your eye has been on the sparrow. Your eyes have been with us constantly, Jehovah. Thank you because you are reminding us today that we are not going to be swallowed by the lake. We are not going to be swallowed by the circumstances in our lives, oh God. But instead, we are going to walk confidently on you. We choose to surpass the wind and we choose to keep our eyes on the word of God. Thank you because you are strengthening our brother this morning, my God. Thank you because you are encouraging us, sister, this morning, my father. And I pray for, for each and every one of us under my voice today, my God, that you are going to walk with us each and every uh, each and every day of our lives, oh God. That you are going to hold our hands strong, my God. That our focus is going to be on you alone, the Redeemer, King of glory. May you help us to remember that you are the gift that was promised upon our lives, oh God. And we choose to, play, to press on, my God. We choose to be more closer and closer to you each and every day of our lives. Won't you keep us, won't you keep us guarded every season of our lives, oh God. Even as we go out of this door today, one thing that we know is that you have promised us you are going to see us on that other side of the lake. And we are going to hold on that faith. We are going to hold on that word, my God, because you are faithful and true to your word. We love you, sweet Jesus. We worship you because you are God all by yourself. May you receive all the glory. Receive the adoration of our mouths, Jehovah. Receive whatever it is, the Lord Jehovah God. We give from our hearts, Redeemer. We love you and we worship you. For this we pray, believing and trusting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah.